Hey, I mean, to do, to do, to do, to do. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, day two of Dev Tips with Kent, and um, I'm gonna show you TDD with React Testing Library. So this is just something I've been thinking about for a little while. I haven't done a whole lot of this myself. I don't do a ton of TDD um, most of the time, but I've been thinking about this with React Testing Library because of the things that it exposes. It makes it really um, like possible and a lot easier to um uh to do tdd so anyway i've got this really simple app it has a login component um where on submit it will alert the data that it's given we want it to have a username and a password and uh yeah so the implementation is just to do and the login uh test is empty so let's go ahead and get this going we're going to need react from react and we're going to need render into document and clean up from react testing library and the reason we're doing that is so that we can use real browser events uh, if you don't render a react component into the document then you can't use real browser events you have to use simulate instead and uh, that i just don't really like simulate mostly because dan abramoff once told me that it's not good um so yeah but i'm a sheep okay so then also we have the cleanup function uh no to be honest i looked into simulate and it was like really complicated it seemed overly complicated so that's kind of why i don't use it but um yeah so because we're rendering into the document we need to clean up so we avoid memory leaks so that we unmount the component and and it gets removed from um the body so um we'll add a after each clean up and that's simple enough and then we'll also need import um, login from login okay cool so then we have test um, let's see calls on submit with username and password okay so then we're going to uh, here actually we'll need to make a fake uh, or let's see handle submit submit equals just function and then we're going to render into document our login with on submit is handle submit and we'll get back oh and look we've got test passing woo um so yeah we'll get back a, an object that has a couple utilities and so this is a login we're going to want to have a username field um, a password field and a submit button um, and so to get the username field, we're going to get um, by label text. And then to get the password, we'll use the same thing. And to get the submit button, we'll get by text. Okay. And so now we can say get by label text. Let's scroll down a little bit. Actually, we can move this down a little bit too, I think. Uh, so we'll get by label text. I'm going to use a regex here for username and ignore case because as far as the user is concerned it could be uppercase all uppercase lowercase it doesn't really matter and so it, it shouldn't matter in my test so that's why i'm using the regex here um, i can also use a function in there or i can use a string uh, that's matched um, complete match um, but yeah i'll just use regex um, and i'm going to set the value to check and then get by label text again for the password and the value will be um i don't know chorus that's not obvious uh, but now my test is failing that's the red green refactor cycle so um yeah let's go ahead and in the spirit of tdd i'm going to go and implement just what i need for this to start working so we'll do um because of the way that this is written it's encouraging me to write uh, or to add a label which will make this accessible so i'm going to say uh, we'll put all this in a div um, and we'll say label HTML for username and we'll say username is our label and our input ID username okay and we'll do a label HTML for password password label Oop and input type is password id is password yep. and that gets our test passing sweet but it's still not doing exactly what we want so let's keep writing this test out we'll get by text submit and click on that 
And that should fail my test. Poof. And so let's make that pass. We'll add a button. Type is submit. And submit button. Okay. And um, yeah, so we've found that thing. Now let's add an assertion. So we'll say expect handle submit to have been called times once. Okay, cool. Now that is going to bust my test. And so let's go back in here and we'll say, and actually from a TDD perspective, I'm pretty sure that like the idea is to write the full test out. I don't know. I really don't care all that much, this is helping me iterate, so it's good. Um, okay, yeah, so we're not calling. And so I could add an on click here, but this is a, a form. I want it to be accessible. I want to be able to like hit enter in the password field and have it submit the form. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll have a form that wraps all of this stuff. And then this form is going to have an on submit. And we'll take the event and event prevent default maybe i could add a test for that but that'd probably be silly um, and then i'll call on submit Ta -da! cool okay so we're not quite there yet because we want to add another assertion to expect handle submit you have been called with username is check and password norris Okay, and our tests run and they fail, so let's make them pass. So here's a, a fancy thing. You might think, oh, well, we need to have a ref here. No, you don't, because if we console, oops, console.log event, uh, here, dot target, target. Okay, and then I pop open my dev tools and we see this object thing. Oop, pop that open. Come on, what's going on? Target is our form and it has some interesting things on here. You can actually see the username and input right there as zero and one. And then two is actually also part of the, the form, uh, but that's not super reliable. Um, so there's also elements right here and you'll have zero and one and two, but then you'll also have these other properties that are kind of grayed out. I'm not sure why they're grayed out. They're probably like, I don't know. I don't know why, but um, it is going to have a, item for every um, um, element uh, form control that has an ID um, and it will be by that ID. It'll also do this for elements that have a name and it'll add that by their name, which is pretty nifty. And so now we can say, um, uh, let's see, we'll say elements equals event dot target and then username, oops, here, let's do this elements username, password, uh, username is username.value, password, password.value. Okay, that's nifty. Yeah, let's fix this up again. Uh, thank you. Um, there we go. Cool. And we're getting blank things now. What? We're getting blank. We expected it. Username. Hmm. Well, fascinating. What did I do wrong? I so I'm I'm cheating. I actually did this beforehand. I'm not this smart. Um. Pretty sure. Pretty much everything is exactly the same. My implementation. Boo. Huh. Okay. I'm just gonna copy things over. We'll copy the implementation first, see if maybe I messed up the implementation somehow. Play that through. Nope, there's something messed up with the test then maybe? I'm pretty sure it looks like the same. Okay. Ah, I'm not sure what changed. Pretty sure those are basically the same. But in any case, there you have it. Um, it might have been, I'm gonna blame that on Code Sandbox. There was a bug. I don't know. Um, there wasn't this BR before, but I doubt that would be, the, what? It fails without the, God, that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, okay, now it's not making any sense at all. Okay, I'm gonna chalk this one up as a Code Sandbox error. Here, let's add a comment, Steph. 
Boo. Okay, well, anyway, I think you get the idea. I'm going to guess that if I pulled this down, it would actually work. Um, so, anyway, that's... Yeah, that was longer than three minutes. I kind of committed to three minutes on this thing, but I decided I don't really care. Um, so, yeah, it's just a quick thing. Hopefully, that was fun and helpful and interesting. And, uh, yeah, TDD with React Testing Library. Have fun with that. See ya.